gifts in small packages, and we can't wait to see them in action in 2014. From the Nationals, let's move over to the Regionals, the Drag 250. It took place in the Underberg in July, the fourth leg of the KZN Regional Champs. A lot of the competitors are regular faces in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. Yeah, just come today just to come and play. We've got a national in two weeks, so we're just basically here today to come and play and test the car and put a bit of time in the seat eh, and have some fun. Yeah, as you can see, the ice is on the car. It's going to be, I think it's really going to be slippery this morning and then cold as well. I think those river crossings are going to be pretty, pretty cold, yeah. We finished the first race and then the last three we haven't. So just to, to get some seat time, get some more mileage on the car and just get a bit comfortable. First up qualifying in Lance Trithui and Carl Wichmann were the pace setters in Class A, putting up a time of 19 minutes and 32 seconds. Just over 30 seconds behind them, Arthur Barnes and Anthony Usher. Now qualifying is a lot shorter in the regionals, with the distance being just 21 kilometers. Don Thompson and Wayne Foster covered it in 21 minutes and 23 seconds. Here's championship leader Reg Sutton and Warren Bielicke, the pair posting the third fastest time. Marcus Taylor and Trace Moore, fourth on the grid, so to speak. All on his lonesome with no one to direct him, James Watson. Didn't do him much harm though, as he was fifth quickest. Another man opting to go solo, lucky number seven for number B21, Gary Campbell. Here's a team that certainly needs no introduction. Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable putting their Ford Ranger to the test in regional racing. While standing out like a sore thumb in the process, they covered qualifying in just over 25 minutes. Proof that it's just as tough in the regionals, the pair suffered a misted windscreen and as a result drove into a gate post. Not too surprising, as visibility was almost impossible inside there. While that mishap put them in 18th spot, 10 places ahead in 8th was Neil Camp and Stuart Ramsey, the pair cutting the 22-minute mark by 16 seconds. Qualifying done and dusted, unlike the Nationals, all of this racing takes place over one day, meaning that there's no rest after the 21Ks. It's back to strategizing, fixing and tweaking in preparation for four more loops, each a distance of 57 k's. First out, Lance Trithui and Carl Wichmann, following their brilliant run in qualifying, the KZM pair very well known from their participation in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. While the likes of Woolridge and Haxable wouldn't have too much trouble crossing this river, it's a different story for the low-carb Arthur Barnes and Anthony Asher. They're currently in second place. Speaking of Woolridge and Huxtable, here they are screaming their way through the field and they certainly needed to after placing 18th in qualifying. No signs of misted windscreens this time though. Not far off in fourth place and first in Class B, Marcus Taylor and Trace Moore. Another familiar face and another man going solo, Gary Campbell. He was seventh quickest in qualifying, won the Clubman's Championship and only needed to complete two laps. Well, we heard from him earlier, Daniel Brooks alongside Gavin Gray and their Ducati's properties bat. Daniel saying he's just there to have some fun. Championship leaders Reg Sutton and Warren Benneker having a rather tough time of things with engine troubles, having done so well in qualifying where they were third quickest. James Watson again, maneuvering his way over an extremely steep and rocky area, well handled as he makes his way through loop two. Not far behind him, Don Thompson and Wayne Foster, also having little trouble getting through. 
Graham Peterson another familiar face in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship, working hard to earn valuable points. The Schroders from Manfred and Son Racing, Manfred and Brent, moving very well after placing 10th after qualifying. They've certainly moved up a few spots. A side-by-side -side vehicle, this one driven by another Woolridge, Gareth, alongside Simon Harrison. The Polaris being developed by Neil Woolridge Motorsports uh, can be officially introduced next year. Robert Spencer and Kevin Teron flying through the field after starting the race in 22nd position. Not flying, though, Ralf Feucht. Hey, I don't know. I came over that big bump over there, and uh, next thing I had no more gears. Uh, I don't know what's wrong. I'm going to have a look now. Uh, pity, yeah. But I must say, very dusty out there. Uh, yeah, you battle, you battle behind the other vehicles uh, to pass them as well. But um, yeah, but otherwise it was going right. Two loops done, two to go. First, though, the compulsory 15-minute stop at DSP. More repairs. And one man who will welcome the break is Marcus Taylor. The pipe broke on my reservoir for the rear brakes and all the brake fluid leaked out onto my boots which made my first lap very slippery on the pedals. Um, but we fixed it now so hopefully the next two laps we can pedal a bit more. Hell of a rough though so I think it's time to just back off a bit now. These cars are falling apart. It's very, very rough. Well, it's not falling apart for Lance Trithui and Carl Wichmann. The men are well in control of this race and barring catastrophe, victory is within their grasp. Lying in second spot, Arthur Barnes and Anthony Asher. Well, that's hard to tell, given how their car is caked in dirt. Marcus Taylor spoke about how difficult things had been with his car falling apart and we're on board with him and Trace Moore and it must be said, I think Marcus was being a little hard on himself. They have definitely recovered. The Schroders, Manfred and Brent, they've done exceptionally well, climbing five spots to move into fifth place. Graham Peterson currently producing one of the drives of the day. He started the morning in 29th place, but is currently just outside the top 10. It's a new car, it's unknown territory, but Gareth Woolridge and Simon Harrison have driven it like old pros. The pair currently seventh in their Polaris side by side. Just behind them, Robert Spencer and Kevin Teron. In ninth place, the exceptionally experienced Gary Campbell, who sits alongside Clint Gibson in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship, relishing the conditions as a driver. The seasoned rally and cross country racer, Tony Ball, handling all the duties on his own, finishing in a credible 10th place. A brilliant race from start to finish for Lance Trithui and Carl Wichmann, ensuring victory in a convincing fashion. It was nice to get the monkey off our back and finish the race, and um, that was good. It was uh, tricky conditions today. It was slippery, you had to be on the money the whole day. So Trithui and Wichmann come home first, one minute and 42 seconds clear of Barnes and Usher, while Woolridge and Huxtable claimed third spot, more than seven minutes off the pace. And so wraps up a brilliant two days of racing in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship here in Freiburg. We've waited long enough. We last saw racing in 1990. And after 23 years, we hope to see it back within at least a year. Congratulations to the winners of the various events, especially Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy. Four out of four with just two races to go. Next up, we'll see you in Tabanchu. The Free State get ready, because we're coming. It's the Ford Dealer 400. You can catch all the action right here on Supersports. The Donaldson Cross Country Channel.